Welcome to the Louis File. You know, when it comes to the Bible, when it comes to reading the scriptures, I, I, my attempt is to keep it simple. Uh, and really, if you understand, uh, of course it's easy to keep it simple. You know, God, I don't think meant for uh, life and salvation to be as complicated as sin and uh, our reasoning and pride makes it out to be. You know, since the beginning in the book of Genesis, there is a theme throughout the Bible. I mean, there may be more than one aspect of it, but essentially there's two minds, there's two thought processes, there are two worldviews. Uh, essentially, there are two wisdoms. They're illustrated uh, by the two trees in the garden. Uh, in Proverbs, they're illustrated with uh, the idea that there's two women uh, with Abraham, uh, he had his wife Sarah, and then he had his concubine Hagar. And they are a picture of these two wisdoms. Uh, in James, in fact, uh, I think it's chapter 3 of the letter to, that James wrote, he says that there's a wisdom that comes from above, and there's a earthly, uh, demonic wisdom. So, there's the mind of Christ, and then there's the essentially the mind of uh, Satan, as found in Isaiah 14. So really, it's about which mind are we operating out of? Which spirit are we of? Uh, you know, Jesus one time was heading toward Jerusalem, and uh, he sent his disciples ahead, and when they came back with a report saying that no one really wanted Jesus there, they said, do you want us to call down fire from heaven that it might consume them? And Jesus said, you don't know what spirit you're of. He said, I didn't come to destroy men's lives, I came to save them. So even when someone's uh, anti-Christ, he's still for them, and he still wants what's best for them. That's the mind of God. That's the mind of Christ. Um, in the story of Abraham, we see how Abraham had this promise from God that he was going to have a seed, but his wife Sarah was barren. So she had a handmaiden named Hagar, and she thought, well, hey, that's the way God's going to do this. And he, she told Abraham to go and lie with uh, with Hagar, and and he did, and they had a child. His name was Ishmael. Of course, if you know anything about that story, you know that it's that is still haunting us even today, uh, in the Middle East primarily, but it's since then spread out all over the world. There's a conflict between Ishmael and Isaac's descendants, Isaac being the real son of promise, uh, in an earthly sense. Of course, in Galatians, it tells us that Christ himself is the seed of Abraham, but uh, let's just get back to Abraham for a second. So Abraham and Sarah reasoned. They came to a conclusion that since God had promised them something and it didn't seem possible or it wasn't going to happen in the way that they thought, that they would help God out. They decided they would, uh, through their reasoning powers, use Hagar as the means by which they would produce this promise of God. Well, of course, that didn't turn out so well. Um, so natural reasoning seems to be somewhat the enemy of the wisdom of God. You know, if you look in Proverbs, uh, many, many chapters into Proverbs, it talks about this woman named Wisdom, and she says she was there before the earth was created, before the foundations were laid. She was by his side. And if you look in Proverbs 7, you see what is a, another woman uh, essentially another kind of wisdom, another mind, and it's the harlot. And she gives the young foolish man all sorts of reasons why he should lie with her while her husband was away. She says, I've prepared my bed, I have incense, I've, I've gone to the market, I've got this, I've got that, I've done this, I've done that. She's prepared the way for him to misbehave. So she reasons with him and he falls for it. Now, I'm not saying we should be unreasoning or unthinking people. But when it comes to the Spirit of God, it takes faith and it's supernatural. It isn't about us, in a fleshly sense, trying to work out things um, and make them happen. It's about living in the Spirit by faith, uh, patience, <laughs> hearing God and then believing that He's going to do what He says and we don't have to make it happen, we don't have to push it along or hurry it up. Uh, and that's, that's where we have our biggest difficulties. So uh, the Bible tells us that, that those of us that wait upon the Lord will mount up with wings of eagles. So 
waiting is a big part of the game when it comes to walking in the spirit and doing what God has called you to do. So uh, my advice is, is to uh, learn how to wait. <laughs> I'll talk to you next time on the Louis file. Thanks for watching.